Arracha al León. Eh, parece que no, pero uno se pone muy nervioso todavía ante... I still get uh, very nervous when I have to give these uh, talks and even more today because you know when you know someone you admire and you see them um, in real life you get nervous or when you respect someone you get nervous. Well, exactly the same thing happens to me and today I have here right before me people I owe a lot to, teachers. People maybe I couldn't uh, thank in the right uh, way at that point in time. Uh, thank you. I have here Yvonne, that was my teacher, but uh, many others, so thank you. Thank you because you saved me. You saved me in a difficult uh, time in my life because it's true that society makes us uh, choose and make important decisions when we're still very young and sometimes we're not mature enough or we don't know what we want to do with our lives and future. They make us uh, choose when we're really young and it's difficult. I was uh, lucky enough. I'm not a vocational uh, um, uh, cook. I love to eat. I love to spend time in uh, the kitchen at home because when we were talking about technology and changes in habits I always say that one of the most healthy things in my life was when uh, the kitchens built in homes were the uh, um, center where the place where families uh, met where people cooked where you learned from your elders and you enjoyed eating and learning enjoying yourself nowadays there are very big living rooms and small kitchens. So we spend more time using technologies or looking to the last TikTok than listening to our elders. And I don't want to seem like uh, someone that's a, a grandfather. I still, uh, I like new technologies and I will talk about some of the things we're doing regarding this. But it is also true that the emotional side of things is uh, there and if we don't uh, make the most of it we are not able to recover it so I uh, encourage you to spend a lot of time in the kitchen which is one of the things that helped me make the decisions I made I was to uh, uh, 12 13 14 years old a normal student uh, I was uh, one more I go to um, BT, I do the first uh, cycle, and uh, there is someone there, his name was Felix, uh, he's, uh, it was my mathematics teacher, and I was really afraid of uh, mathematics, I thought I was really bad. The methodology, the vision, and uh, the uh, will of this teacher helped me see that I could also do well in mathematics and also in other subjects. And as I could do things in other subjects that were good, I could also uh, face new challenges. But I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. And I don't know why, I don't know the exact reason why I decided to um, go to the um, Leioa College. I had never cooked in my life. Of course, I've had enjoyed food, but I had no idea what the world of uh, uh, food um, was. But it did sound interesting. And when I uh, get to the uh, hospitality college in Leo, I find a passion. I don't know if I'm a person that uh, had to be a chef, but I was passionate and it uh, took over my life. I wanted to be a chef over everything. I wanted to learn more and more each and every day. And I felt uh, powerful because I, every day I took a, a tool called uh, knowledge uh, home that allowed me to transform in an immediate manner uh, things uh, that were uh, part of my daily life. I could cook at home. I could talk about things that I had never uh, talked about before. Imagine that first shock when you uh, feel more and more hunger and continue to learn more and more and more and you uh, find teachers in your path that uh, for me and that's why I thank them before people that um, bring you uh, 
uh, close to reality. Not only uh, teaching experts that explain how things had to be done, but that also uh, tell you about something, because I was one of the youngest uh, students. I was uh, 16, more or less. And they tell you uh, about what's going to uh, happen in, uh, in the um, real world. And I talked about Yvonne, and, and I'm doing so because he's, he's here. I wanted to uh, continue studying and also uh, work at a restaurant. And uh, Yvonne came from El Bulli, Martin Berasategui, from all these other uh, colleges that were not in social networks before because they didn't exist, but you found them in books and so on and so forth. And I said, wow, this guy f comes from all these wonderful restaurants. So he's not only teaching, but he has all these stories to tell. And I want someone like him to guide him and my, to guide me in my learning process. And he did so, and he would say, where are you from? And Morevieta. Well, close by, I worked in a place in Garnica, the Bazar de Marte. Here you will learn this and this and this. Will you go there the weekends? And I said, yes, of course. I'm uh, hungry. I want to do more things. I want to learn more. Uh, the sooner, the better. So yes, you go there and you learn. You go there, you uh, meet all these new people, and, it, and you have on the one hand what you're learning at schools, but also on the other hand what you're learning in the restaurants that you are working in. These were the best uh, three years in my life uh, regarding uh, learning. When they ask, who is your reference, Martin Berasategui, this or those, I always say, well, I have many and to name absolutely everyone that has taught me throughout all these uh, years in all the different restaurants. It's very uh, difficult because I will uh, forget about the important people. But uh, I will never forget about the teachers in college because they taught me the most basic things, the basic uh, cooking skills. They showed me how to have discipline. They taught uh, me this, which is something fundamental. I consider myself uh, uh, nice, uh, uh, pleasing. My mom says that I've always been a nice uh, guy, that I behaved, but I was quite chaotic. But they showed me to have a discipline, to be tidy, to be on time, which is a fundamental value for me in my personal life, in my professional life, and something that I always want to transmit to others. ¿Para qué me sirvió todo esto? And what was this useful for? It, well, it made me even more hungry. I needed a banquet, not just a little bit of food. So after I went to college, I trained in different restaurants, different kinds of cuisine. I read a lot as well. I was somebody who wasn't a very keen bookworm. All of a sudden, I became somebody that would just gobble up books, magazines, journals, because I needed to feel more power. I needed to have more knowledge. I needed to increase my knowledge power. And that's how you gradually train as a person. You gradually become a great professional and you you know about different uh, restaurants and you start imagining and for me imagination is the first part of desire and I think while we move we actually reach our desires our wishes and having seen different restaurants different places I imagined and I sort of saw in my mind's eye and started drawing in a little exercise book what my, I wanted my restaurant to look like so what happened? Well, you imagine something uh, over 20 years ago, and that gradually changes. There are new times that come, you change, your taste changes, and you change as a person and as a uh, restaurateur as well. So in 2005, 2005, we opened Athurmendi, a restaurant. Athurmendi is my second surname. and. I wanted to create this little space, this little place where I could um, put into practice all those dishes that I'd written about in my little exercise book that I'd imagined in my mind's eye, the way I'd imagined the design of the kitchen. And then when I put them into practice, they actually didn't look very much like what I'd written in my little exercise book. I had to create a new reality that would have been impossible 
were it not for uh, youngsters, young people that also had studied with me or in other catering schools and that joined the Athurmendi project. Athurmendi is something that started off small, small beginnings, humble beginnings, n virtually nobody knew about us. And we became known not by creating old cuisine, but uh, organizing banquets. I'm really proud of actually, and I still do have this uh, next to my restaurant, a place for banquets and events, because that allowed us to be sustainable, economically sustainable, viable, and it meant that people from the surroundings could get to know us gradually and start to uh, get interested in what we were doing in that little place called Ineco now, which is then called Athurmendi. In 2007, with a great deal of hard work and a great deal of passion and, not, and luck, of course, our first milestone, which was our first Michelin star, that made us a bit more well-known. We carried on working hard. In 2010, we got our second Michelin star. And in 2012, we moved 150 meters uphill, to create a new place with a different uh, vision. And di mm, the first Athurmedi was 25. I was 25 when I prepared the plans. But seven years had gone past since then. I was 32, and I w had a clear idea of what kind of a restaurant I wanted and what kind of restaurant I was going to take risks for. Mm -mm with a very little uh, few assets that I had but that I expected to obtain a different kind of space I'll tell you a little bit about it later because I'm a person who's really really lucky I've been lucky in life things have gone well for me and I've been able to have a team that spends time cooking uh, cooking at in Athurmendi the people that work at Athurmendi and the other uh, uh, kitchen that I'll tell you about now Athurmendi in 2012 was awarded its third Michelin star and that really changed our lives completely. All of a sudden we changed a scenario. People from any corner of the world uh, came to visit us and popped up and uh, the restaurant was always fully booked. The prices of my set menus changed a different kind of people coming, a different kind of clientele, meant that we became internationally more well-known. And it also meant that Athurmendi grew so much. So the Athurmendi group today is comprised of something which we we can't really repeat, which is our uh, uh, home, our original house, which is Athurmendi now. We've got two restaurants in Japan, one in Tokyo, one in Nikishawa, and another restaurant in Lisbon, another in London. In Seville, we've just opened one in Brussels. We'll be opening in February one in Bilbao, and in June, another in Madrid. Always following different concepts. There are different eyes. And people ask you, well, how do you do that? It's impossible for you to be everywhere. Now, you're right, I'm not everywhere. I can't clone myself. And we're just about to open the Brussels restaurant, by the way. But this is done thanks to people like you who are out there in the audience today. In Athurmendi, the average age of people that work there is sometime around 25, 30, 35. People that have uh, studied at Catering College like you have, people that are joining the uh, labor market or doing both working and studying at the same time, because you, you are the transformative power that makes a project such as this mm, turn from being something quite normal, quite common, into something quite extraordinary. It's you that do that. There's no Messi. There's no Ronaldo. We haven't gone out and 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 uh, signed up somebody really expensive from somewhere else. No, not at all. It's all of you. All of you have come out from uh, catering colleges that are dreamers, that are very passionate about what you do, and uh, being able to transform you as professionals to be uh, part of a family that wants to be excellent. Without you, this would be absolutely uh, uh, impossible. What, what, what happens with all of this? 
Well, we've now got a training uh, system, which has been one of the best things that I've done in, I think, for in a long time. People would come to Athormendi from all over the world to learn with us. In fact, we still have the over 2,500 applications from people around the world who want to come to our home, to Athormendi, and learn with us. And this has a difficulty added to it, a professional difficulty, which is that we can't have all of these students because there's all this sort of legislation, there's a kind of a mm, bureaucracy there, which means that the barrier, mm, there's a barrier there that somebody that wants to train people, new generations of people from uh, catering colleges and makes them our life uh, difficult. And But we've been lucky, so I'd like to say thanks to all of you because you, I know you've made a tremendous effort to create a sort of a platform, a platform via which these students that are passionate about their job can come and uh, study with us and work with us at the same time. This is something that I would would have loved to have happened in my era as well, that you could just go to that restaurant that you you were dreaming of to learn, to study, and uh, that everything was organized, and that also you had some kind of income so that at the end of the month you were self-sufficient. Because you know what happens? Something that I am really, really concerned about. We turn the telly on, and you see MasterChef, which is a really great program, and, and it actually makes gastronomy fashionable and cuisine fashionable. But what you see in MasterChef, uh, in comparison to what happens in catering colleges and restaurants in real life, there's a huge difference. So those people, the audience of MasterChef is up here, and the enrollment of catering schools is also high because people get all excited. But then what happens? Restaurants don't have any local talent because people that have studied and that have got all enthusiastic about the gastronomy world, when they get involved in the labor market, they realize that there's a tremendous handicap which that they cannot enjoy their passion professionally at the same time as their lives. And we have to realize that ch times are, they are a changing and we need to create or or manage this new kind of uh, hotel and catering business so that youngsters that are passionate about this world can join the labor market in an optimum fashion so that they can combine this passion and their profession with their lives. And what can we do? There's different ways of doing this. One is through this kind of uh, training courses where you don't just go to study and say I'm uh, I uh, then go back home and then the other is this uh, um, upskilling and change the way we do things and look at the times we do things since 2005 Mendi has been a restaurant which only opens two evenings a week that's Fridays and Saturdays. The rest of the week, there are no evening services. From next year onwards, from the January, the first next year onwards, Athelmendi will close on Sunday as well. And in that way, we can combine our profession and our passion with our social lives. And this is something that we've had to think about for time. It's, but it's going to happen next year. Um, and during the week, uh, of course, we've been closed during the week in the evening since 2005. When we asked people that work with us, the success was uh, uh, brilliant. This wasn't something that we wanted to impose, because sometimes what you think is right actually isn't right. So we spoke to everybody, and everybody agrees. We asked them, we asked every single uh, worker this year, and it's we've just got about a month until the end of the year it comes, we asked what they wanted to do next year. And 100% said to us this week that they want to stay with us. They want to stay another year with us. And that's great. I'm really happy about that. 
But what's really great is that in our training plan, with all the uh, youngsters that are in our hotel and catering uh, college, is that 98% of the first years have been offered a job uh, from Biothermandy, not because we're an NGO, no, because they're just damn good at what they do. They are exceptional. These are the people that have actually transformed and improved Athramendi in the last 12 months because we believe in your talents and we believe you are the people that can change the future. And without you, this is never going to be sustainable. We need you. And if I earlier thanked the teaching staff, I should now thank you because... This isn't something that I just invented. I actually truly believe in new generations. And people say, oh, you know, generations going to be this, that, and the other. No, no, no. The world is going to get better. The world is getting better. And that is thanks to the fact that new generations are getting better than the previous ones. And that always happens. And I don't want to bore you. Things that we work on, and as I said earlier, I was talking about my the kitchen I spoke about, where we are in a group, the fact that we're uh, working on new experiences in Athurmendi. There's an expansion team that just work on expansion for other kind of concepts. There's the people that work all the time. We've got the students and former students that are now um, part of our staff, and when we've got the other side of things. Another um, interesting projects because I've heard you talk about artificial intelligence and other things today. We've also worked on three different areas that are really important, which we call to be able to cook a better future. One is the area of health. We're working on different projects, one of which is for people who have uh, food intolerances, allergies, etc or have difficulties. We've worked on that with uh, the Galdakana Hospital. So these simply and directly and economically, we've looked at different things so that if you've got a problem, a heart problem, diabetes, there's a child, obesity or cancer, they can find different responses to eat every single day in a healthy, easy, simple way. This was the first project that we got involved in. The second was with Galgakano Hospital to design a menu menus for patients that are in hospital. And the third um, leg to this store is this idea of creating a different system in the food world for hospitals can by changing the content of the menus as to the way that they're served we're designing different kinds of trays and so uh, so on uh, there are other things that i'm going to forget i'm sure but that's uh, as far as health goes sustainability we're working internally and externally on sustainability because we think that you always need to focus sustainability on what is served. We thought that's not sufficient, though. And we've been thinking about that since 2011, 2012. So we spent, we set up this different, different area, which has all the technologies and tools that are at your disposal so that you can uh, go to a restaurant which is powered by solar panel or a, a ground source pump heat using recyclable materials. We reuse rainwater. We've got a seed bank with over 400 national local seeds, looking at all the different seeds um, which are most resistant, resistant so that with all this information, we can transfer that to our primary sector, which is something else that's really important in all of this. And then working again with people that cooperate from outside, with us, with uh, some uh, local artisans that convert the used oil that we produce into soap and giving each uh, customer a um, bar of soap for the made out of the oil that we've used to make the food we've also got a community of women who 
uh, make these uh, soaps. So we're showcasing all that. And there's all sorts of other projects as well that are uh, coming from outside to us. So there are many, many, many of them. Something else, and I'm coming to the end, and I know you like this idea of artificial intelligence and how this is going to revolutionize our world, our lives. And it's true. There's something that is uh, irreplaceable, which is emotion. The uh, uh, special touch of uh, hand crafters, of homeschool cookers. I've got a partner in a small company that I set off called Shabir Uribe Chebaria, who's the CEO of Sherpa Artificial Intelligence, which is considered uh, the number one company of AI in Europe. And he always says AI is like a dagger. You can use a dagger or a knife either to stab somebody or to collect uh, mushrooms or peel an apple. So it's, it's a tool at the end of the day. So that's all great. Artificial intelligence is in our lives and it's here to stay. It, it's in our uh, kitchens. We talk about robots. The Thermomix has been around for a ages and it's a robot. We just think robots have a face and they walk, but actually robots have been with us for many years now. And having said that, what can I do? What do I do with Xavier Uribe Echevarria? Well, we've got a, a company called Best Partners, which collects data using big data on the best producers in the world of the primary sector. How did we go about that? We've created a network of uh, chefs around the world and they're divided up into countries in Peru, in Brazil, in Juan Raca, in Spain, in Paris, we call Pascal Barabot. And around the world, we've created this huge community of chefs. And with their knowledge and knowledge of experts in the world of sustainability, traceability, and packaging, we've created a series of items which explain to each one of these chefs who uh, in the, uh, how they should appraise who the best producers in the world are. Of course, a, uh, one would assume that a chef has the uh, capability to decide by tasting which the best product in the world is but there are a whole series of other items that we don't that are diff that we don't know about such as packaging traceability whether old seeds are being used but with all of these items we've created different categories of first courses um, seafood, bakery, uh, fruit, vegetables, etc., etc. The whole series of different categories, and with each item, what we want to give each of these, we're going to get each of them to analyze their own territory and decide, in their opinion, according to these items, who the best uh, producers of the world are. What we've done is we've got an, a huge amount of big data about primary sector food producers. They're very, very special. What we've done is we've put this all onto a platform which will be live very quickly, very shortly. And it's not for the world of food of, and catering. It's for everybody. It's free. In just one click, you can find out who the best producers of different items in the world are. So what I'm saying with this is that digital world is great, but the digital world isn't just somebody getting information from you, but rather are all different ways of using data and using intelligence, etc. And the emotional side of things needs to carry on existing and always will always exist. There are more projects, there are more things in this other kind of uh, cooking that we do. But without you, there would be no projects because in each and every one of them, you are present and you are the driving force behind them. So thanks to all of you.